What's up, everybody? How's everyone doing? Good morning. So we moved over to probably because it's uh, raining out, be a little loud, and because probably gonna have to do part today, and I have folks up on here. Uh, so I'm, I, it's a new setup. I'm in my office instead of outside on my uh, laptop. So check everything real quick. Does everything sound okay? All the audio sound good? All right. Got everything recompiling onto here. So what I left off doing yesterday was we have this sprite sheet. So this sprite sheet that um, I found on uh, a Spriter resource, something like that. Um, it has pretty much everything, but it doesn't. <laughs> it's missing like quite a few of the animation frames that I actually need. Um, one of the run animation, this is correct. Yeah, so what I'm going to have to do, to, to do today is figure out um, what I'm going to do for that. So how I'm going to actually get this run animation working correctly, how I'm going to get all the frames. Um, someone yesterday, I guess was his name, actually brought up a good point. Um, it was kind of something I was thinking was that uh, SNES... Um, the way that they set everything up is basically all in tiles, so you don't have sprite sheets like this too large, they would take up too much memory. So what they would do instead is um, something like this, which I found, where they split um, all the parts that you would need, all the parts that you would need for uh, a given character, right? into these individual tiles and then it would be reconstructed or run. Um, you notice here that they're all grayscale and that's because the SNES also stores palette information in memory. So the grayscale right here would just be indices that it would actually use to palletize. Um, this might be the direction that we actually in. that I'll just take this in. This actually wasn't, this image wasn't used for the SNES, actually. This is the Game Boy image. But, you know, look at the resolution difference. Yeah, it's probably quite a bit different. So there's going to be a little more detail in here. So, I don't know. I'm going to leave it up to you guys. You let me know. What, what do you think I should do? Should I... Go with this, open up Photoshop, and we start chopping stuff up and then reassemble it into the frames that we need for the animations. Uh, do we do that or do we use this, which is not from the correct game. This is from the Game Boy version, but it's already got all the tiles chopped up into what we would need in order to assemble for the characters. Um, I don't know. Yeah, let me need. L l let me know what you think. If I don't hear anything. I'm just gonna make it.
Hey, Unity. Oh, thanks for the image. Uh, Unity gave me a... Um, right. Cool. Good. Glad the audio is better. I might just stay in here. <clears throat> so, Unity, I don't know if you heard what I said, but I've got this uh, Game Boy uh, sprite sheet that I found, which has all the tiles that you would need. What's more educational to do? Uh, I mean, okay, so if I go this route, these are the actual sprites that's going to be used for the game. Uh, or this is the actual sprites that are ripped from the uh, actual SNES game, right? So it's going to be more authentic to the game. However, this entire stream is going to be you guys watching me go into Photoshop and chop stuff up. So I don't know how fun that's going to be to watch. It's definitely not going to be that ed educational. Because all I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and chop up different parts of the character. Um, yeah, and if you look at, we were talking about this yesterday, but if you look at uh, like his lower half of his body, several of these are uh, the exact same frame, right? So just look at the legs for these. These are different actions, but they all have the same sprite. Uh, same thing for like upper body and all that stuff. So I got to go through and chop all this stuff up and I'm going to have to come up with some way. We'll be back in an hour. Nope. Right. I won't. Uh, so I'm going to have to chop up this stuff, move it around. I'm probably going to have to grayscale it. Whereas if I use this thing, it's already chopped up. And what we're going to do is go through, define the sprite regions, and then start reconstructing animations uh, in code. So that's, that's the difference. Y'all, let me know what you think. Right back. I think here's what I think we'll do just for the purposes of the stream and it being live so you guys don't have to watch me do Photoshop so I'm going to go through and we're going to construct sprite regions I'm going to show you guys how to do that um, how I would do it I'll walk you through it and then in code uh, we're going to define the sprites and we're going to get uh, let's just do like a standard run animation for this guy and then if we get enough time, depending on how long that takes, we could start to define different actions. So we'll have them running in place. Um, and depending on the keys that are pressed, you know, we move the gun up and down or something like that. Reconstructed the top of the coffee cup, added smoke. That was bothering me. Okay. Sure, yeah, just send me the, uh, send me the image. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. I think we're going to do that. Um, he's going to be grayscale for now. So what we could also do is we'll come up with a way to uh, devise a palette, I guess. Right? So this is kind of, this almost looks like um, the original Contra on the NES. Like it's a, a 4-bit palette instead of this one, which is probably, that's probably an 8-bit palette. Seems good for live. Yeah, so let's do that. So I'm gonna need to open up Photoshop anyway. And um, we're gonna hand pick out these sprite regions. So for, the, for those of you who don't know, textures on the GPU, um, they have UV coordinates that are normalized from 
uh, zero to one. All right, so zero, zero being up in this top left corner, traditionally, um, one, one being down in the bottom right corner. Those can flip as well. But traditionally, it's gonna be that. Um, so what we're gonna do is we know whenever I load in a texture, um, into Gunslinger, which is the framework I'm using. Whenever we load a texture into Gunslinger, we know uh, certain attributes about that texture. We know its width and its height. So we can use that in order to normalize uh, certain coordinates, right? So all we need to know for a sprite region is uh, where it starts, its top left corner, and then its bottom right corner, and then the GPU can do interpolation based on those UV coordinates. Me, U0 is bottom left, don't know what's left. But yeah, it just depends. I'm also, I'm pretty sure somewhere in here for OpenGL's purposes, I'm inverting coordinates anyway in the shader. So it might just be that. Like stuff like that gets, if you're like, if you're in DirectX, you have to flip textures. Or if you're in OpenGL, you have to flip textures as opposed to DirectX. Like stuff like that is not universal. So it's all, it's all uh, graphics API dependent. Um, but in my case, it's top left, the bottom right. Just know what you're using and then be consistent about it. That's really all that matters. <clears throat> um, or maybe I had that wrong, who knows? Maybe I'm doing it the wrong way. Maybe you're correct, Ethan. Maybe I need more coffee. All right, so let's open. So what's also good about these SNES, Game Boy, NES sprites was that they're defined in very particular regions, right? So you can tell that they all, for the most part, take up um, uniform blocks, right? Nothing crosses over a, a boundary. That's, uh, what are these, by eight tiles? Be a region right here. Yeah, so it's eight that way, eight that way. So we get eight by eight regions, which is nice. Um, so we don't even necessarily have to go through and drag out regions. We just need to know where the start and stopping point for a particular region for part of the body is gonna be. And then our character is gonna be comprised of eight by eight regions that we uh, just put together. Should be easy. <clears throat> I'm not gonna think about like a very modular, uh, generic way to come up with this yet. We're going to be very specific and literal about it. So uh, understandably, if I see any comments that say, lols, why aren't you, why aren't you coming up with a formula to do this? Uh, just keep in mind that that's why. My general philosophy is get it done as fast as possible, get it working, and then go through and try to clean it up. Not to make it as pretty as possible at the beginning. Otherwise, you spend your entire time doing that. So let's do it. Let's just get these legs running, right? Alright, so I gotta think about how I want to define this because it's not going to be full sprites anymore. These are actually sprite regions. And we construct those. Um, hmm. Well, for now, we'll just do sprites. And I think we have...
All right, so let's find these regions here. So it's going to be 0, 15, Photoshop would give me some metrics about pixel one. Um, do uh is well actually defined. So let's look at the left is going to be. Um, so we know that we're. Eight by eight that contains these little blocks. <clears throat> the two by two by two by two by two two by two. This number of row, uh, columns it takes, rows it takes up. So we're going to need to define columns, rows, um, and a starting x. X, we need to be explicit with. Um, actually, starting row would be fine because we know it's in eight. And then starting column. So this is basically your number of columns is going to be your width, your number of rows is your height, your starting row. Uh, let's go. Your starting row is. The y that you have, the starting column is the x that you have, if that makes sense, right? <clears throat> Basically, you're going to treat this like a spreadsheet. So for, for instance, like um, for this one, the x position or the l for that top left corner is going to be starting column multiplied by a right so it's eight pixels times the zero column gives us zero same thing for its top okay it's um uh it's right is however many columns it has plus the start times um for each each row 
So it starts at uh, left plus plus width, right? So the number of rows is going to be um, actually it's the number of columns two times eight. Okay, so that means it's going to go from zero to sixteen. Zero to fifteen should be it. Actually, it should be that minus one because we're going from zero to. <clears throat> Yeah, we're gonna run with that. Um, F32, the B then is our top, plus again, we're having two rows times eight per span, and track one. And we'll make these floats. All right, so does, does that make sense? So our left for that top one is going to be zero. Um, our top is going to be noise canceller. Every once in a while, you cut out first. Let me see. Let me let me check OBS, Ethan. I don't have anything explicit set up. This mic, uh, it has a a filter on it, but it should be filtering everything behind the mic. That's the pattern that I have set up for it. So. Oh, here we go. There's a, there's a noise gate on this guy. <clears throat> All right, so I shut off the uh, noise gate and noise filter. So if that if that fixes it, cool. Let me get my uh, chat back up. I don't know where it is. Nope. Restore chat. Pop out chat. Uh, Ethan, hopefully that fixed it, man. Because uh, I just turned off the noise filter in OBS. So. Um. All right. So we've got left. Yeah, that's what I wanted. Thanks. Uh, left the right so we've got left plus 16 minus one so that should be 15 and then um my bottom should be the exact same thing should be 15. And this should define again if we go back to look at all i got open we go back to here that should be 0 to 15 0 to 15 that defines this sprite region here that should be good so that should be our formula uh, remember when I said I wasn't going to make a formula? Um, I made a formula, so cool. So let's just make let's make a helper function up here. Um, it's really just a vec four, and it's going to be um, sprite region. That's what I want, right? Sprite region, and we want. Uh, U32, um, start column, U32, start row, U32, number of columns, U32, number of rows. And then we're going to do this guy. U32, 
left is F32 start. Nope. Um, yeah, I'll just pass that in. So um, U32 column pixel span. And then we want a row pixel span as well. Let's spawn. Because again, if we look at this, um, our tiles are going to be an 8x8 eight eight span for each individual tile. And that's how the SNES defined it as well. So we got the start column uh, times. Column pixel span. Lord, there we go. So then we have our left, it's going to be our offset plus our full um, width. And that is uh, number of columns times our column pixel span minus one because we're including zero in this. And we'll do the same thing here. Minus one. We need to do this. So v dot x, v dot y, v dot z, and v dot w. That's our vec four for our UV dimensions, and we're just going to return that vector. All right, and this keyboard's acting up. <clears throat> so we have a sprite region there. And we'll define it here. So, sprite region. And again, our start column is zero. Our starting row is zero. We have two rows and two columns. Um, and our column pixel span is eight, as well as our row pixel span. That should give us our first frame. Let me get rid of this. Let's define this guy. Actually, let's just let's verify that that actually worked. So if I comment all this out, I don't need to comment this out. I just need to not push that. So we have one frame. I've got it running. Sprite now. I'll take two arguments. Now let's play our net. What are you complaining about? 201. Oh, yeah. Um, v dot x, v dot y. Right now, 218. Not take two. Ah, right. Um, so I will comment this out. And for sprite new, we're going to pass in a VEC4 instead. Dimensions. All right, let's just compile. Uh, nope. Cool. So there's our first uh, sprite region. We've got our we've got our sexy legs there. <clears throat> okay. Now we need to to find the others, and uh, we'll be good to go. Cool. I'm almost wondering. Um, let me load this back up. I'll tell you what just came to my mind. I'm almost wondering if. 
uh, we actually, well, because we could use this, we, we could do it exactly the same way as they did for um, SNES, right? So before it gets drawn to, to screen, it looks at the palette that's going to use for that, and then it colors the pixel. So could write a shader that does something similar to that for the quad batch. So for player one's quad batch, it'll have a pixel palette that goes with it. I don't know. That'd be kind of interesting to show off. I mean, it's, it's nowhere near what they did for SNES, but it kind of like a, I don't know, a, a modern way of handling that. I don't know, just to show off that idea. Anyway, so there's our first one. Let's do the second one. Um, and we're going to start from zero one, the second column, second row, and then again it's a two by two, and we have eight by eight. And that's wrong. So let's see. Start call. Oh, no, 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 no. We're not doing that. Um, we are still on the zeroth row. We're just on the second column. Um, make sure that that's how that looks. It is. Okay. So now we got two frames. And I'm just going to go ham because this entire thing is across that front. your opinion on Linux uh, I like it it's fine um, I've used it for jobs uh, I've used it for personal work no problem with it um, I actually I still have Windows 7 um, and people have made fun of me for it but I don't want Windows 10 um, so if I ever get to a point where I have to get rid of Windows 7 I'll probably just hop onto a Linux distro which there's plenty of people in my Discord that would be happy to hear that. So uh, we are on the fourth column. Fourth column, zero with row. And this one is a three by two with an eight by eight span. Uh, so again, this was three, so now we're on the seventh column, zero with row, two by two, eight by eight. Yeah, I could define this, man. Problem with Linux is user land software. No Adobe for Linux. Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah. By the way, your link for Discord is expired. Oh, um, can someone in my Discord, would y'all mind just posting the link in the chat, please? If not, then I'll have to, I, I thought I set that not to expire, but I'll update that for the description. We have five years, Windows will be running on a Linux kernel. Yeah, probably. Seven plus two, that puts us at nine. Let me check this again. So it should be three after that. Yeah, one more. Come on. This keyboard's acting up. That'd be the stream.
All right, boys, let's see if it worked. I don't have high hopes. Posted, but I don't know if YouTube will let the, oh, okay. Yeah, let me do it then. I forgot about that. Let me, uh, let me do this real quick. I'll update the description so that it's, uh, it's a link that won't actually expire. Let me update this link and then I'll uh, I'll answer your question excess about C versus C plus plus. Hey, we got twenty two uh, viewers in. That's pretty cool. Thanks for joining, guys. Excuse me, being a boomer, real quick. Oh, geez. What am I missing here? No, 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 no. All right, there we go. Um, Discord link. Save. All right, uh, I updated the, um, the description for this video, so hopefully that that goes through. Let me know if the Discord link works now. It should. So why do I like C instead of C++? Um, a few reasons. The main one being that the language itself has gotten so ridiculous that I can't keep up with it. I'm getting older and um, I can hardly remember what I had for breakfast, let alone all the crap that they throw into the language standard. I like C because the standard has not changed in like 30 years, um, especially if you hold on to like C99 or C89 like I do. And I can do everything that C++ does using just C and just defining things myself. So one of the things that a lot of people dislike about C is that they say that it's super verbose. I don't understand that. I think something like a template specification is ridiculously verbose. Um, the fact that you have to define, I mean, you don't have to, but you know, just defining like setting up a class for something, uh, like for a, uh, like a vector four, if I want to do something like that, it's just the whole paradigm that gets surrounded around the language just drives me insane. Um, like, let's let's do this. Let's pick apart some of my previous code if we're gonna if we're gonna dive into this. So, let's go to Injon real quick. So this is my um, C plus plus OpenGL game engine. All right, how are we doing on time? We're doing okay. So I worked on this. Uh, this is like my learning engine. Um, someone asked me the other day how long I've been doing game stuff, how long I've been programming, and how I got started. Um, uh, I got started with this engine, really. So it was had a lot of it had a lot of iteration. Um, it's probably been reiterated reiterated upon and refactored like three or four times um, until I got to this final state. <clears throat> um, why not Rust? Oh God, same reason. I mean, there's a couple of guys in the Discord that use Rust, and every time they post something, um, I'm impressed that they understand what the hell they're looking at. I'm sure they feel the same way about C, but, you know. Um, so this is pretty much all C++. It has a little bit of C, but that's mainly just um, like third-party library stuff, header file only stuff. Mainly that's probably just the SDL libs, or uh, STB libs that are in here. But let's let's like let's look at something. Geez, let's let's go to like something that should be simple, right? So let's look at the math library. Um, it's not in there. It's in yeah here. 
Uh, so look at Vec 2, right? So like, for something as simple as what a, a freaking Vec 2 should be, it's got uh, copy constructors in here. It's got different initializations. Um, one of the things you should realize if you guys aren't familiar the difference between C and C++ or what a, um, like a POD type of data is, as soon as you do anything outside of a default constructor in C++, you're, you're getting away from POD. What that means is that if you want to write like a custom serialization system, which you need to do for C or C++, um, you have to write explicit serialization methods in order to handle that particular data because the compiler has to go through and it has to um, uh, reinitialize all that stuff in a very particular way. You can't just dump it into a serialization method, right? So I can't just take a block of complicated class method data and just dump that into a binary method that would just like take that starting position um, in memory of that object look at its size and just dump it into uh, binary data. So that's one reason why I dislike it. Um, because it's very easy to get into this, right? It's very easy to screw yourself by, by going into this kind of writing. Um, and it's just, it's just, it's super verbose. So someone's, you asked, what does it look like in, um, in C? Uh, here's C. That's my my vec two. It's four. It's four or five lines of code. Five lines of code, right? And then whenever I want to dump this into like a binary serialization method, I just take any vec two that I have and I calculate its size and I dump it into memory, or I dump it from memory into into that structure. That's that's one of the main reasons I use C, is, yeah, uh, just being able to have the ease of use of that. Um, also compiler uh, errors with templates is they're just ridiculous. You use anything out of the standard library. Uh, that's one reason people don't like C is because you know the standard library doesn't exist or it's very minimal. That's one of the reasons I love it is because any compiler error I get I can actually read and understand. If I get a compiler error from C++ I have to go to Stack Overflow because I have no idea what the hell it's saying. Um, you know, maybe I'm just dumb, but that's what it works for me. Uh, and I don't like the compiler uh, doing stuff behind my back that I don't know what's going on. And that, that comes down to a lot of constructor stuff, a lot of template stuff. Uh, why'd you change your naming conventions to the C style? Uh, consistency, that way I don't have to remember whether or not, like if it's a function, uh, <laughs> if it's a function like um, void, this is a function. Like this is something that Casey Muraturi does. Um, he'll do, uh, I can't remember the name of the style, um, but he'll do like capital letter first for function names. He'll do it also for any structs that he defines, um, type. And then whenever he makes a an instance of that, that way that's defined like that. Uh, or does he do it the other way? We're like, this is type. See, I can't even remember. Like I'm trying to remember how Casey does it and I can't. The way the reason I do it the way that I do is because I don't ever have to remember that. Everything's under under uh, lowercase and I use underscores. Just those two, that's it. No, camel case is whenever you do lower class, right? Or a uh, lower lowercase and then you do uppercase. Right? Yeah, Pascal case. That's what it is. Thank you. <clears throat> so that's why that's why I do C and that's why I do the way it looks is because you can go through every single line of my code. It's going to look the same. And I don't have to sit here and try to remember, uh, which if you guys have, I don't know how old you guys have you been in industry, but one of the things I hate the most about working in software, it makes me want to quit almost every day, are uh, code reviews because none of them ever have to do anything with how the code actually freaking runs. It never has to do with performance. It never has to do with, uh, is it actually feature complete? Does it hit the standards that you were supposed to, uh, given the requirements? Every single time, it's some manager that, look, that looks at your code and says you're not coding with these particular style standards. I can't stand it. So I don't ever have to worry about that in my own stuff. 
the last thing I want to worry about is did I do this to some arbitrary, ridiculous coding standard that has nothing to do with engineering? What I want to do is I want to actually work on a problem. That's it. So I keep it as simple as possible and I go from there. And that's my rant for the day <laughs> before, before I actually go to work and look at coding standards. So yeah, that's my, that's my two cents on why I use C in a nutshell. Now there is stuff that can get, please use spaces instead of tabs, general, yeah, yeah, whatever. I use tabs because it's faster and yeah. Um, I do, uh, that's, that's the one, so John, that is the one thing that I understand, like um, use spaces instead of tabs. That, that actually has a legitimate um, uh, logic behind it. That's legitimate logic. You know, because depending on the editor, yeah, exactly. You were waiting to get that out. Dude, it's every day. It's every freaking day. <clears throat> like managers that haven't written code in 10, 15 years that are just focusing on stuff like that. Go work for Google, guys. Just do work for Google and see what that's like. Uh, all right. Especially, oh, Jesus. All right, let's get back to being productive. So we we defined our sprite regions. We're pushing those in. Here's another thing, like C doesn't have a standard library. Okay, well then just make your own library. How hard is that? Here, here's a dynamic array that's templated, right? So let's look at dynamic arrays. We'll go to containers, uh, dynamic arrays. So this is directly from Sean Barrett's stretchy buffer, if you guys aren't familiar with that. It's indexed exactly the same way as a C++ vector would be. Uh, resizes the exact same way. And it has utility functions that give you various features that you would actually be interested in, right? So you can look at the back of the array. You can grab directly doing the indexing. You can clear it. You can look at its size. You can pop from the back. You can push. You can preserve. Like all that stuff. Let's look at hash tables. Oh, you can't do hash tables in C. Well, all right. Here's a hash table. It's defined the exact same way. Oh, and it's templated. I can look at, yeah, look, I can declare a hash table of a particular type. It can have a key type, a valid type, it takes a hash function, and it takes a, com a comparator function for that hash. Easy to use. And it has iterators. What, you can do iterators in C? Yeah, you just define an iterator type, and then you can use that. Define how it actually works. So, Again, I go back to my argument, and I'll, I'll just wrap it up with this. You can do anything in C that you can you could dream of doing in C++ or Java, and more, right? What, some person said closer to the metal. Like, I'm actually, I feel like I'm closer to the metal uh, in C than I am in C++. It's probably not true, but it's, it's not true, but it just feels that way sometimes. So, I feel like there's less friction. All right. So, um... Yeah, so we have a dynamic, dynamic array of our sprites. We're defining sprite regions, and then we're going to push those into our array for this animation. So if we look at this now, hopefully it compiles. It does. All right, so one, let's see, a couple of these are wrong. Oh, it looks like um, the last and the first frame are the same. Am I seeing that right? No, that's not right. Did I push in the correct frames? I did. The regions are okay. Uh, actually, the regions are probably not okay. That's probably the problem. So let's go through and verify these. So uh, it starts at zero, zero and two, two. Okay, so this should start at Really the definition of freedom. Yeah, definitely. I, I, I just don't feel like I'm constrained. Um, I also do a lot of woodworking um, and I like building my own tools and I like using hand tools more than I like using electric tools. So it's probably just part of my, my, my personality, really. <clears throat> um, like whenever this, whenever this stream started, the guys that watched it like from a couple days ago when I started this, I was thinking about making my own sprite editor. Um, I have to force myself not to do stuff like that. 
zero one, number two zero, uh, two two, that's right. So zero one, two three, we should start at four zero. And we got three two. Zero one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, zero, two, two, seven, eight, nine, zero, two, two, eleven, zero. Ah, so this one's wrong. So this one needs to be uh eleven zero needs to be um three two. Three two and that puts S at fourteen zero with two two and there's only six frames. Or there's seven frames from zero to six. Alright. Um, yeah, Ratchet, that's actually a good point. Um, but even when I was starting out, I, I liked, I have a hard time. Um, this is why I particularly don't like learning new frameworks or libraries or utilities. I don't like having black boxes. Um, I like taking things apart and I like knowing down to the core level of something, how it works. That way, if I have to do it myself, I can, right? <clears throat> um, and I've, I've just always been that way. Uh, what am I looking for? Why am I, oh yeah, the time, let's, let's, this needs to go faster. Uh, let's get rid of the DT. So let me know if like the text is too small, any of that stuff. I hate watching streams where the text is really tiny and you can't see anything. So let me know if it uh, if it's not legible for you guys. What I'm gonna do right now is uh, just add a quick debug to be able to step through these frames because it looks like one of them squashed in a weird way. So let me let me figure that out. Um, current frame. Ah, let's make this an S32. And let's not do this for now. I forgot about the stream. What is wrong with you? What could be more important than this? All right, cool. So that then that one looks stretched to hell. I think I'm that just did not look right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I know why. So these are all uniform size, right? It's all good. I'm just kidding. Um, so this is 
if you look at this, um, this caught my eye when I was running because it looks really compressed. Um, and that's because of the way that I'm drawing the quad batch. I'll, I'll show that in a second. But if you look, this uh, that looks right. That looks really compressed. That looks right, right. That looks good. That looks really compressed. So the ones, if you notice your pattern, the ones that are taking up um, uniform size, so the two by twos, those look fine. The one that's a three by two looks compressed, and that's because it's fitting within a two by two region. So if I go to the quad batch, uh, this, uh, what is it? The dimensions for the scale of this guy, it's uh, it needs to adjust to that in order to fit that. Um, but I think the smarter way to do this is to um, actually break this up into regions and then push those regions into a quad batch. So let's let's draw some stuff so we can think about this. So, hmm. all right, I'll be right back. I need to get more coffee. All right. Okay, um, say the name of the show. Uh, you'd be surprised, XS. I mean, you work on, well, maybe micro microcontrollers isn't the best, not now anymore. But uh, I mean, if you're program programming chipsets, if you're um, working on Mike Acton's team, <laughs> uh, certain game studios they'll they'll program directly in assembly for a lot of their engine code uh, because the compilers, uh, depending on which one you use, they can do a really terrible job of uh, uh, compiling down to a, uh, assembly. So if you could just write the assembly straight out, then you don't have to worry about that black box of a compiler um, messing up what your intention is. So let's get Photoshop up. Oh man. I use assembler on embedded every day. Yeah, see, there you go. Man. All right, um, so let's think about this real quick. Time for notes.
notes with John. Here we go. Uh, so we've got our character, and he's broke up, broken up into regions, right? Uh, the way that I'm doing the quad batches right now is that they're going to be a standard size. And so all that UFB information is going to fit into here. Meaning that if I have something that's actually blocked up into these regions, as long as all the regions are exactly the same thing, they can fit inside of this and it'll look uniform. They'll have a uniform scale. The second that I want to do something that has a region of this, and try to squash it into there. Then something that would have had a region of this, which is a two by two, and something else that's taking up the same space, which would have been a three by three, now the ratio is completely off. So it would be something like this instead. Uh, like this. So then this is gonna have a, a squashed appearance compared to this, if that makes sense. So, what I should do instead is take advantage of the fact that I'm using uh, my quad batch system, which can handle tons of sprites um, and reconstruct these from uniform eight by eight cells because they are eight by eights, right? So what we'll do instead is a character, um, instead of being this, right? What we're going to do is define a character as, let's say, you know, however this needs to look for that particular orientation. And then all of these. Um, all these quads will be eight by eight, so they'll all be the same uniform size. Um, and really it's just the way that you construct them that matters. So we're gonna have to redo the way the sprite regions was working. I'm gonna have to find a new system. Uh, it's gonna be able to take some kind of mapping Uh, to determine how this needs to look. So let's look at this sheet. Oh yeah. Don't interpolate, thank you. You can post on the Discord. I think everyone here is in the Discord now, so. Post it in, um, uh, I don't know if you can post in resources, Ethan, but you could do, just post it in general, and Unidate can post in resources, or I can later on. Uh, boy, so it's basically going to be like a color by numbers map that I'm going to have to define for what this looks like. So we know that, let's say a character, uh, shoot. Something like that. So that's a three by three with legs that are a two by two.
What's this? Are you doing pallets? Yeah, we'll be getting into pallets. So it looks like it's going to be a 4-bit pallet. Uh, but right now, what I'm... Have you ever done pallet shift animations? Um, no, I've never done them. I'm familiar with them. Um, they're pretty awesome, though. It's really cool what you could do with those. But I've never, I've never done them personally. Man. Um, so as an aside, this is in, uh, I don't know if it needs to be said for people who are new to, or just joined, this is in no way the way that the SNES did this. Um, they did split these up into 8x8 regions like this. They did tile. So you have all of your all of your images in 8x8 um, regions that, are, that take up a certain block of memory, right? And then you have a uh, palette that's located somewhere else in memory you just reference that um via the the sprite tiles that's encoded in there but um i'm not going to do it necessarily that way we're going to do it some somewhat similar so we're going to have this atlas we're going to pull it up construct the characters from the tiles but we're not going to do it the way that the scnes did it for one i'm not 100 percent sure how they did it and i'm not going to um, spend all my time trying to learn how to um, backwards engineer the SNES. If you want to do something like that, go watch like Javid's videos. Um, what I'd rather do is just come up with a system that'll work for us to be able to get the character reconstructed using the tile system. So what I'm thinking is like define a max region that the character is going to take up uh, for all of these orientations that the tiles could be oriented. Um, and do like a paint by numbers thing where we actually index into the sprite sheet itself. We index which tile we're gonna use and then where we place it within that block, right? So let's say that, a little off topic. What's your thoughts on Java? <laughs> uh, not good. My thoughts on Java are not good. Um, that's because I use it every day, so. Not sure how the original game handles collision, but depending on your implementation, you could use tile data to handle the collisions. Yeah, exactly. Um, if you want something better than a box. Yeah, could do something like that. Um, haven't decided. Like, I, I'm not sure how, um, this is something that I'm, I'm trying to, to figure out as I go along. Like all this is stream of consciousness, consciousness, by the way, guys, this isn't planned. This is, you guys are seeing me work as if I were like developing, like doing a project to make a, like the, the Noida video. Um, that was a lot of just dicking around and like doing tests and coming up with stuff over that week. This is basically, you guys are seeing that live. So I'm kind of trying to decide how I want to take it, how far I want to go. Um, my plan is to do the first level, but I don't know how much of the first level I'll get done within a reasonable amount of time because I'm only able to, able to do this like an hour and a half each day during the week. It's really the only time I have. <clears throat> um, and I'm not sure how much I want to totally re-implement what um, like the original game did. So like to the collisions thing, I don't know if I want to do like modern day... Um, uh, like object oriented bounding box collisions or anything like that, or if I just want to do axis aligned or I don't know. Cause my CS class has me learning it, but I like it so far. It, that's good, man. I mean, if you like it, I don't, I'm not going to knock you for liking it. You know, find something you like. We need, obviously we need Java programmers. Android's not going anywhere, you know? So, um, Learn it, and if you enjoy it, great. You'll have a job when you get out. I dislike it, um, but that's because I like I like C so much. So I just I don't like the way that like Java is the ultimate in verbosity in terms of languages. I'm assuming you're trying to assign tile positions for bodies. The top and are the top and bottom separate sections? If so, you can have two dynamic quads, just offset like the bottom or top by a set amount of pixels. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. Um, I was actually thinking about designing 
like doing this instead having um, like a set region so think about all the orientations that the character itself could have it's going to be within a min and max region of eight by eight tiles right so let's say that his absolute max columns is four let's just say he's a four by four by four for all the orientations that are possible right <clears throat> so then if we look at any of these other uh, regions what we could do in order to define like where he fits within this space we could say this is the um, zeroth tile so let's say like zero one Uh, whatever this is, I don't even know. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So it's sixteen tiles total. So this would be the sixteenth tile, the seventeenth tile, um, and then whatever his body might be up here, right? And then whatever the offsets are. So let's say like this is. I'm totally making these numbers up. It's like three, four, five. Uh, 18, 19, 20, right? And so then that would define the character. So then what I could do is define this eight by eight or this, you know, min max region as a 2D array or something like that. And uh, maybe we have like a, a, a null space or something. So within a, uh, the character's definition, we'll just have this set up as something. Um, and, you know, maybe in order to define, like, because one thing that I'm going to have to think about is some of these orientations are strange. Like, if you're climbing, so probably just need to keep in mind, like, where his foot is. So just his foot position, because I'm thinking about collisions later on. Uh, I'm not gonna worry about these down here because we're not doing that level. Um, I don't know, what do y'all think of that? I, th I think that, that makes sense, right? So define, let's come up with a minimax region. And this will be, you know, Jimbo or, or Bill. I don't even know. <clears throat> this defines Bill, right? And it'll be like a paint by numbers index into tiles, and then we'll reconstruct which tiles they are on the fly. So we just need to define this for Bill. No, the only thing that's gonna be weird is Um, I don't necessarily have this information for all the sprites, so like all the other characters, like enemies and stuff like that. So I might have to make them myself, but I'll do that off stream so you guys don't see that because that would be boring. But it's 30 minutes. I got like 30 minutes. So let's try and let's try and define this. Um, yeah. Also, I lost my music. Where'd my music go? All right, let's get to it.
All right, so looking at what we did, um, I wanted to find a player, like a sprite region. We're gonna use that as a way to index. So let me make a sketch here. The stream is making my keyboard and mouse really laggy. Um, later, Don. I gotta head out in a second too. I'm gonna have a, a work meeting here in a second. Um, I'm gonna try and do these every morning though, uh, during the week. So keep it consistent. Um, type destruct. Uh, so we'll have like a player sprite region. Now, what am I trying to do here? I just want a 2D array of freaking sprites, or a 2D array of indices that I can look into. Um, so like a sprite index map? I don't know, I hate naming stuff, but let's just call it that for a second. It really doesn't need to be that, it just needs to be Like a 2D array. literally just needs to be something like that. I'm not even sure if I need to make it like, how many jobs are there for C? Uh, quite a few. Sprite container, yeah. I hate naming stuff, I, I hate it. Because it, it really doesn't convey what I'm trying to do but I also don't care. But if this were a code review, um, cause really what I'm thinking is, all right, let's be explicit. Like I'm getting bogged down in really stupid stuff. Like let's say that we actually had a bill struct, right? So it's like player bill. Um, what do I care about him having? He needs to have animations. Um, uh, like, I mean, really, maybe it's just the animation that has to be set up this way because I don't want to do something like player animation and make that specific. Make sure to make the next. Good luck with your meeting. Thanks, man. Yeah, I'm like I said, I'm gonna try and do these um, every morning. Like my, my typical schedule is work out. Like I'll do a little bit of work and then I'll work out and then I'll hop on here. Um, and then the rest of the day I'm just working. Uh, my nine to five. So should be able to keep that consistent unless something weird pops up, but usually it doesn't. Uh, so really the animation itself. So I'll have, so I don't need this though. Like it, what it should have is, um, Not regions, I just need a U32. And these are gonna be regions. And then I'll have like a U32 columns, U32 rows, right? Which will make this up. And then in order to index which region I'm actually interested in, 
Uh, I'm thinking way too hard about this. This is what a programming interview is like, Lay. For those of you who haven't done it, you got a limited amount of time to come up with something before it ends. This is what this feels like. And I swear to God, after the stream ends, I'll, I'll totally have a clear mind and solve it. Let's just let's do this. Figure out the max region. One of them could be four. So it looks like four by Maybe four or four by two, because this is two here for the legs. One, if he's lying down, if he's oriented vertically, how much does that take up? I think his legs still take up two only. Yeah. That's what I'm seeing. I don't know if you guys see anything different. It should be four by four by two is the max region that I'm going to define for this player. So this anim. I'd like to have the animation different from the region. That would be nice. So instead of this for the animation. It should be something like this. So, yeah, I'll see you later, Excess. Thanks for dropping by. I appreciate it. So, here's what I'm thinking. Um, so, for a sprite, it'll be a texture and it'll be a tile into that texture, right? And then animation. Actually, that shouldn't even be that. It should be. No, I shouldn't even do that. The Animation is a series of frames, so like an individual sprite frame, because it's going to be broken up into regions. God. I should probably have like a minimax bounds, and that transforms into the player bounds.
I like game programming. I've tried creating a game engine following a guide, but quit since I didn't follow concepts. I'm willing to learn one day and I will make a game engine. Cool. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot. There's a ton that goes into a game engine. I think one of the traps that a lot of uh, people that start game engines gets into is thinking that they're going to make the next Unreal. Um, Unreal's been around for like 40 years. <laughs> Just about anyway. Um, and some of the best games programmers, PhDs, and whoever else joins Epic in order to work on Unreal. So you can try. But... Right frame. <clears throat> so there's a combination of tiles, right? So it's like a group of tiles has a particular texture that's referencing for those tiles. The animation should be a bunch of sprite frames. Um, yeah, so. as a texture, use the tiles that get pulled out of that texture. Just call it sprite frame animation. This would be Should I define the min and max in here? That didn't make sense. The min and max should be in the player itself. Oh, man. Because you pull up an animation, you say you're on this particular frame. Look at the time. All right, I got like 10 minutes. You look at this um, particular frame that you're on. You look at the tiles uh, for that particular texture. You pull that out, pull it into the quad batch. But you need to know how to assemble that within a given bounds. So I'm not sure if the player itself will hold that information. So you have like a minimax bounds. Go back to this. So the player will hold this minimax bounds. We'll look at, it's like we're on uh, the running animation and we're on frame zero. So we look at that. It has a group of tiles which are stored in a 1D array, right? And these tiles correspond to, let's see, how would I correspond this? They correspond to Let's see, maybe an index and a position? So they correspond to like an index? Maybe, yeah, maybe there's like two, two. <laughs> oh, geez, yeah, so 
This is my last minute decision making. This is what got me the job at Bethesda. So do correspond to like this tile will correspond to this tile in the um, texture map. But then for its reassembly, this tile corresponds to this position in the reassembly map. That's the, the level of stupidity that I'm thinking. <clears throat> and I think it'll work. So, so for a sprite frame, it's not a U32. Um, we'll actually do like an IBEC. Just a vec two of tiles. So whenever you define a sprite frame for, let's say, like the player, what we'll do is we'll have this region that we have set up, and then we're going to just dump these into like all these defined ones into that 1D array. We're going to dump those into this uh, sp uh, sprite frame for an animation. Um, and it's going to have both this information, this tile, and it's going to have this tile. Um, then whenever you go to reconstruct it at runtime, we're going to pull through, we we'll say we're at this, we're at this particular animation, we're on this frame, here's our tiles. We look at the texture that's associated with it, which is this texture here. We're gonna pull this frame and then we're gonna set its position in the uh, 2D matrix for the player, which is this guy. Everything's gonna be set to negative one by default. So we'll mem set that. Negative one, negative one, negative one, all the way. And we're gonna say, you know, this guy, this guy, it's a, this index in the reassembly map. So then this one goes here, right? So we'll put that image there. And then we look at this one and let's say it's this one, this tile, and we know that it goes there. So then we put it there, right? And we'll continue to do that for all of the images in the frame. Okay. And then this will, you know, That'll be the bounding box. That'll be our ground, right? So our, our player is always going to be oriented toward that's the ground, depending on what the min and max bounds are. Which again, it looks like this actually isn't correct for the player. It's actually going to be like a four two. So I think that'll work. Running through that in my head. So we're going to run with that. <clears throat> Anyone have any questions? I think that'll work. Um, it's probably janky as hell, but it'll work. Um, so. Got stuck linking OpenGL. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, it keeps getting asked of me. Every, all my videos, I get people that ask 
for um, general engine stuff and OpenGL tutorials and all that kind of stuff. And I keep linking them to other other people, um, but that seems like a missed opportunity. I should probably figure out a way that I can present it myself. AVMA. I'm actually about to end the stream here in a second, guys. I got to go um, do work. But um, I'll be doing these Monday through Friday. That's the plan. Around the same time. So probably 9 o'clock. What do you see? <laughs> so where's my player definition? Let me try and just add that real quick. Uh, so I have a bunch of animations. These aren't going to be that, though. These are going to be sprite frame animation. And we're going to have like a min and max. Um, or just rows and columns. Should I do that? Yeah, man, I appreciate it. Um, so this one is going to be kind of in that same vein. Uh, I just figured that while I'm working on it, I'll just stream it so you guys can kind of watch it. And then I'll, uh, I'll do like a montage and some anime. It's pretty much similar to like the Noita and the serialization thing. So I figured I'd rather do that and make some videos out of it and get some views than just do it by myself and uh, feel like I'm wasting time. So this has already kind of felt better to me. I feel more productive streaming it than I do just working by myself. So. Hopefully you guys enjoy it and it's not too boring um, because I tend to just put my head down and work. I gotta get better at talking while I'm working and still be productive. So thinking rows and columns, uh, we'll define that. And then we need for the player So here's another thing is that we're not going to be moving on a grid. Um, we'll just be constructing this player's sprites out of a grid, but it's, it's pivot points. Orientation is going to be at a particular place. So his transform is going to be something, it's going to be a, just a 2D position in space and it's going to be in uh, its floating point, right? So it's an R2 somewhere in the world. And then from there, we'll have to construct um, our, our grid, our bounding grid. That's gonna be like a four by two that we'll place all of these tiles into. That's how I'm thinking I have to do that. And then this'll actually, this'll make um, collisions easy, I think, because they're gonna be uniform. Um, I'll know the bounding box. I can define that really easily. Uh, yeah. So I'm thinking that's the way it's going to go. So we'll have a number of rows, number of columns. That didn't really make sense though. Um, so let's just call like not sprite region. Right, map bounds. And let me make it define up here because I know that it's going to be. Get rid of all this.
Okay. So, um, this is the plan for next stream, is to get this guy assembled. So we're gonna have this tile region that's defined. Um, we'll have the texture that a frame will look at. It'll look at a particular tile index within a, uh, a texture. It'll pull that out. It'll um, assign that tile index as well as the index for the reassembly for the character, depending on some kind of Metamax region. And then with all that information, we can construct frames, we can construct animations with those frames, and we should have... Uh, and if we go with this paradigm, what I'm going to have to do is... Um, I can't use... Let me, let me show you where I got these. Um, yeah, Sprite of Resource. I'm not going to be able to use these. Um, maybe I could. I don't know. But these were just like full rips that someone grabbed from like an, uh, an emulator doing like the the step through technique and then they take snapshots of the game itself as it's fully assembled. Uh, we, I probably won't be the way that we have to do this or we get to do this. Um, so I might have to take him, split him up into eight by eight tiles and then assemble it the same way. Maybe, I don't know, haven't decided. But anyway, um, appreciate you guys coming in. I'm gonna have to end the stream now, but uh, like I said, I'm gonna be doing this probably, uh, or I plan on doing it uh, Monday through Friday. So um, appreciate you guys coming in, checking it out. And uh, I'll see you guys later. Uh, join the uh, Discord. So I put a link in the description. If you guys enjoyed the Discord, you can talk about more stuff. Um, a lot of people in there, game devs, uh, musicians, artists, you know, whatever. So. All right. See y'all later. Bye.